Hello, today we are taking a look at basic navigation in the JF-17 with NDCS. We'll be covering the different methods of entering waypoints, basic navigation, airfield information, and an ILS landing. Let's get started. If there are waypoints already in the mission, you will need to do an initial DTC update to load all that data into the aircraft. While we do that, let's take a look at the JF-17 navigation database. Specific numbers are reserved for specific purposes. 00, zero is your INS alignment. 01 to 29 are reserved for navigation. These are your waypoints. 30 to 35 is reserved for route points. 36 to 39 is reserved for pre-planned points. 40 is reserved for your SPI. 41 to 49 is for mark points. 50 to 58 are for airfields closest to your last destination point, and these are not editable. And 59 is an airfield, which can be edited. we can pull up the destination page with the DST button on the UFC. Now let's return so that we are on the main page of the UFC. First, let's look at how we can select waypoints. The main method is to select the arrow next to the waypoint number and type in the number of the waypoint you want. Alternatively, we can also press the arrow next to the waypoint number and then use the quick select rocker on the UFC. The HSD in nav mode is fairly basic, but let's cover what data is available. This will cycle between priority threats and all threats of the RWR. This is our distance and bearing to the current selected waypoint. This is our heading tape, and here you can find our current heading. We can also toggle between true heading and magnetic heading here. This will change the scale of the map, and this can also be done with S2 if the MFD is soy. And here we can toggle the map on and off. And finally, we have our tack hand toggle. Some of this will cover a bit more later as we do our navigation in the air. Below the HSI, we have our airfield page. This shows the number of the airfield in the database, distance to airbase, bearing to airbase, altitude of airbase, and if it has an ILS or TAC in. Before we add waypoints, let's take a quick look at our destination page and note that we already have waypoint 01 to 03. Remember that 00 is our INS alignment, so we start counting our waypoints at one. Now let's open up the map and we'll look at our first method of adding waypoints. This method only works on the ground as we will have to do a DTC update to load them. Using map markers, we'll place the map marker where we want the waypoint and enter WPT followed by the number of the waypoint we want to add. We'll just create two waypoints for now. With the waypoints done, let's now do another DTC update so that these will load into the aircraft. Make sure the cartridge is ejected before doing the update. This time we'll only load the nav data from the DTC so that it goes a little faster. And now our two new waypoints have been added. Being they were added to the end of our current flight plan, a course line was drawn to connect them. Now let's add two more, but this time we'll add them manually. I'll use Scratchpad to grab two points. When we put the cords in with this method, note that they will need to be in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now let's select the blank waypoint entry and we'll start entering these in. The first line is our latitude. Press the arrow to the left to start entering our data. Once done, press the left arrow again to validate the data. The arrow on the right will toggle between north and south. The second line is our longitude. Again, the left arrow will allow us to start entering data. If the data is not valid, you will see an EE flash and you will have to re-input the data. Once valid, the right arrow will toggle between east and west. In our case, it is not a valid west coordinate, so it will not toggle. The final line is the altitude in feet. Press the arrow on the right to start entering data and again to validate. The arrow to the left will toggle between positive and negative. I'll quickly add in one more point now. With that done, let's look at how we can manipulate the DST page now. We can step through them with the step and back buttons. We can also copy and paste these points. And finally, we can clear out a point as well. Keep in mind, we can also edit any existing points if required. Now we'll return to the UFC main page and select waypoint seven. As you can see, our course line is now gone as it is not connected to the original flight plan. If we try to select a blank waypoint, we'll get flashing dashes, letting us know that it is not a valid waypoint. I'm going to clear out all the extra waypoints we've added, and now we'll take a look at other information on the UFC. 
Here we can toggle between true airspeed and calibrated airspeed. To the right of that, we can toggle between auto and manual waypoint selection. If set to auto, the next waypoint will automatically be selected when you are two nautical miles from your current waypoint. Now let's look at our navigation modes. If we press the arrow next to FPA, or Flight Path Alpha, we'll see a sub-menu with the options for Flight Plan A, Bingo, Approach, Course, and Flight Plan B. Bingo will always select the closest airfield in your database. Course will display your flight plan course. Currently, flight plan B doesn't work, or at least I haven't figured out how to make it work. I have a feeling this might be a DCS limitation. And finally, we have our approach mode. Within the approach page, we also have some other options. We can toggle between ILS, TACAN, and SCA. SCA is basically VFR. We also get the approach MFD when this mode is selected. Let's take a quick look at that page. This page is split left to right with the left side being ILS and the right side being TACAN. The bottom section is the airfield information. For the most part, you don't need to edit anything here, but it is good to see all the information you might need. I'll put up an infographic so that you can pause if you want to see what all this is, but I won't go over each one individually. Now we can also toggle between FAF, Final Approach Fix, and Runway. An important note here, if you are in FAF and flying the approach, it will automatically switch to the runway for you. This will be demonstrated later when we do our ILS landing. We can also switch the airfield we have selected. Simply press the arrow next to the current airfield selected and enter one from the airfield list. Before we get in the air, there is one more thing I would like to cover. If you go to the configuration panel, you can change the type of map displayed on your HSD. This will also require a DTC update. You can also set this in your special settings of the aircraft, but it's nice to be able to change it while inside of a mission. Now that we are airborne, let's first talk about the autopilot system. By pressing the AP button on the UFC, you will enter attitude hold mode. If your bank angle is less than seven degrees, it will also engage heading hold. If greater than seven degrees, it will hold your bank angle instead. We can also engage altitude hold mode by pressing this button. Once engaged, it will attempt to hold your current altitude, but you can also put in a desired altitude by pressing the arrow on the right and inputting your desired altitude. Looking here, you can see we have auto mode engaged, so when we get within two nautical miles of waypoint one, it will automatically switch to waypoint two. While we are waiting to get to waypoint one, let's go ahead and cover HUD symbology. On the left, we have our airspeed carrot. This is the expected airspeed at waypoint. And in the center, we have our waypoint distance indicator, our waypoint steering cue, and our waypoint symbol, which is the box. Above that, we have our selected waypoint heading carrot. On the right side, we have our altitude carrot, which is the expected altitude at waypoint. And then below that and to the right, we have our time difference between arrival time to waypoint and our current time. Below that, we have the flight plan number, followed by the waypoint number selected, and then finally the distance to waypoint in nautical miles. Now that it has switched to the next waypoint, let's disengage autopilot and maneuver our jet to the new course. Once happy, re-engage the autopilot as desired. Now let's take a look at approach mode. In this mode, you will see that we retain a lot of the same symbology, but also gain our ILS bars for landing. We need to enable ILS on the EFIS page to turn it on. While we're on our way to the airfield, let's also take a quick look at TACAN. We can turn it on on the HSI page. Currently, we have no data because we are in ILS mode, so let's switch it to TACAN and take another look. Now you can see we have our bearing and range to airfield via the TACAN. For this tutorial though, we're going to be using ILS, so let's switch it back. Now we just need to fly our approach. When we reach the final approach fix, we want to be around 3000 feet AGL to intercept the glide slope. So we'll start descending in preparation for that. We'll continue to fly the approach and wait for it to change from FAF to runway. Now that it's changed over, we can see that we have already intercepted the glide slope. So now we just need to align the bars and take it all the way down for landing. Keep the flight path marker within the E-bracket to maintain proper AOA. You are mainly going to use the throttle for this. 
I'm a little bit below glide slope, so I'll give it a little power until we intercept it. While we're waiting for it to intercept, we'll just keep adjusting left and right to keep our bar centered. I'm still low here, so let's just slow our descent until the bars start to come down. This is a much better lineup. Now we can just fly this all the way to the runway. Now we give a little gentle flare at the end and we are wheels down. We'll keep the nose up for some arrow braking until we are below 150 knots. Then we can lower the nose and deploy the parachute if needed. I'm, so, I'm a little bit wobbly on my pedals today, so forgive the poor landing. But that's it. This should cover the basics of navigation in the JF-17. There's a lot more to these systems, but this is a great starting point. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.